Hey everyone, welcome to this video on prefixes and scientific notation. These are things that we use as a way to write big and small numbers, and they show up in almost every physics problem. So in this video, we'll cover really big and small numbers and different ways that we can write them. Then we'll learn about prefixes and how to use them. And last, we'll cover scientific notation. We'll learn how it works, and an easy method to write any number using scientific notation. So first, let's talk about how do we deal with writing really big or really small numbers. This might not seem like something we have to worry about, because the numbers we use every day aren't really big or really small, so they're easy to write. For example, Timmy went to the market and bought 6 apples. Well, what if Timmy bought 600 apples? That's a lot of apples, but it's still easy to write down. But what if Timmy bought six quintillion apples? Well, then it gets a little ridiculous to take the time and the space to write out such a large number. Nobody would buy that many apples, so let's look at some real examples. The distance between the Earth and the Sun in SI units of meters is 149,597,870,000 meters. The number of atoms in one gram of lead is a really big number of atoms. And on the small end, the wavelength of green light is 0 0.0000054 meters. Writing out all of these numbers like this every time would be crazy. So what do we do? Well, there are several ways that we can write really big or really small numbers. First, we could use words like hundred, thousand, or million. Instead of writing eight with six zeros after it, we could just write eight million. Second, we could use prefixes. Prefixes are little words that you can stick onto the front of another word. In this case, we can add prefixes to units as a way to write big or small numbers. Third, we can use what we call scientific notation. We'll explain it later, but long story short, scientific notation is when you multiply a number by 10 to some power or exponent to make it really big or really small. And prefixes and scientific notation is what we'll really use in physics. So, let's start with prefixes. Here's an example. The word kilogram is made with the prefix kilo and the unit gram. The prefix kilo stands for 1,000, so a kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. Another example, the prefix centi means 1 one-hundredth, so a centimeter is 1 one-hundredth of a meter. Here's a table of some common SI prefixes that we use. Each prefix has its own symbol or abbreviation. For example, kilo is lowercase k and centi is lowercase c. And notice as you go up, the numbers get bigger, and as you go down, the numbers get smaller. And just a quick side note here. You may have realized that in the list of SI units that we covered, the SI unit for mass is the kilogram rather than the gram. The reason for that is some historical thing involving some king from the 1700s, not important, but it's interesting to note that the unit for mass is the only SI unit that uses a prefix, and the rest are just regular units. Okay, so let's try an example of converting between units with prefixes. Let's convert 250 grams to kilograms. We know that 1 kilogram equals 1,000 grams from our table, and so first we'll write our starting amount, 250 grams. Next, we write that equal amount, that relationship, and since we already have grams on top, we're going to write out that new relationship with grams on the bottom so that we can cross out grams. Next, we multiply 250 times 1 kilogram to get 250 kilograms, and we only have 1,000 with no units on the bottom. 250 divided by 1,000 equals 0 0.25. So, 250 grams equals 0 0.25 kilograms. So, our last method of writing really big or really small numbers is using scientific notation. First, let's start with the foundation of scientific notation, which is powers or exponents of 10. Remember that when you see a number with a tiny number above and to the right, the tiny number is called an exponent. That exponent tells you how many times you'll multiply the number by itself. In this case, we have 10 to the power of 2, so we multiply 10 by itself 2 times, 
and we get 100. So 10 squared, or 10 to the second power, is 100. So we have 10 to the power of 2 equals 100, and if we have 10 to the power of 3, we multiply 10 by itself 3 times, and we get 1,000. If we have 10 to the power of 1, it's just itself, so we just have 10. What happens if we have 10 to the power of 0? Well, any number to the power of 0 is actually just 1. So, if we make the exponent bigger, the number we end up with gets bigger. What happens if we make the exponent smaller than 0? It turns out we actually can have negative exponents. If the exponent is negative, you write 1 divided by that number to its positive exponent. For example, 10 to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1 divided by 10 to the power of positive 1. That's just equal to 1 divided by 10, which is equal to 0.1, or 1 tenth. 10 to the power of negative 2 is equal to 1 divided by 10 to the power of positive 2, which is equal to 1 divided by 100, or 0.01. And 10 to the power of negative 3 is 1 divided by 10 to the power of positive 3, which is equal to 1 divided by 1,000, or 0.001. So, to sum it up, Positive exponents give you big numbers, which is numbers larger than 1, and negative exponents give you small numbers, or numbers smaller than 1. Let's look at an example. Let's say this is the mass of the Earth. Well, it turns out that this big number here is equal to 10 to the power of 24. So instead of writing this really big number all the time, we could just write that the mass of the Earth is equal to 10 to the 24th kilograms. But that's not actually the mass of the Earth. The mass of the Earth is roughly equal to this, a 6 with a lot of zeros after it. Well, we're given that this big number with a 1 at the beginning is equal to 10 to the 24th power. So then how can we write the mass of the Earth? Well, that's just 6 times that really big number. So we can write 6 times 10 to the 24th power. And this right here is scientific notation. We have some number multiplied by 10 to some exponent, and that exponent can either be positive or negative. Let's take a look at one more example. This number here is the width of a human hair in units of meters. It's really small, 0.000002 meters. But how can we write this using scientific notation? Well, if we're given that this number is equal to 10 to the negative sixth power, then the width of a human hair is just 2 times that number, or 2 times 10 to the negative 6th. And there we have a small number written in scientific notation using a negative exponent. Alright, so is there an easy way to take a number and write it using scientific notation? There is, and this is really all you'll need to remember. The trick is to move the decimal and count how many times you move it. Let's walk through it using this number, 3,800. Something to remember here is that sometimes there isn't a decimal written down because it's implied. In our case, the decimal would be here at the end of our number 3,800. Any farther left or right, and it wouldn't be the same number anymore. First, we're going to move the decimal point until there's only one number to the left of the decimal. In our case, we'll move it to the left one digit, two digits, three digits, and we're done. There's only one number to the left of it. Next, we write down that new number, and we multiply it by 10, which is how we write scientific notation. And all we're missing is the exponent above the 10. And technically, we could include those other two zeros, but we don't need it for this example. So the next step is to count how many times we just moved the decimal point. In our case, we moved it three times. And finally, we write that number as our exponent above the 10. So here we need to decide if the exponent is positive or negative, and here's how we know. If we move the decimal to the left, the exponent is positive, and if we move the decimal to the right, the exponent is negative. In our case, we move the decimal to the left, so the exponent is positive 3. And this makes sense because we learned that positive exponents are used for numbers larger than 1, and negative exponents are used for numbers smaller than 1, and 3,800 is definitely larger than 1. Okay, cool. So we took a number, 3,800, and we rewrote it using scientific notation, 3.8 times 10 to the third. This one was pretty simple, but there's a quick way we can check to make sure we did it right. All we need to do is multiply 
3.8 times 10 to the third and see if we get our original number. You can use your calculator, or we can reference the table earlier in the video, or you might just remember that 10 to the third equals 1,000. Either way, 3.8 times 1,000 equals 3,800, which is our original number, so we know we did it right. And let's try one example going the other way. Let's use this number, 0.00024. So first, we need to move the decimal point so that there's only one number to the left of it that isn't a zero. Here, we'll move it one, two, three, four times until only one number, the two, is to the left of it. Next, we write down this number, 2.4 times 10. And finally, we count the number of times that we move the decimal, which was four times, and we write that as our exponent. But this time, we move the decimal to the right, so our exponent is negative. So there we go. 0 0.00024, written in scientific notation, is 2.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. And if we type that into our calculator, we'll get our original number back, 0 0.00024. So, to sum it up, here are the ways we can write really big or really small numbers. We can use words, prefixes, or scientific notation. And as an example, Here's a way we can use all three to represent this. We could use words and write 1,000 grams. We could use a prefix and write 1 kilogram. Or we can use scientific notation and write 1 times 10 to the third grams. All right, so let's recap the important stuff from this video. First, we learned the three different ways that we can write really big or really small numbers. First, we can use words like hundred, thousand, or million. Second, we learned about prefixes and how to use them. And third, we learned about scientific notation. We also learned how to take any number and write it using scientific notation by counting how many times you have to move the decimal left or right. And finally, we have this nice handy table that shows some of the prefixes that we can use, their symbols, what exponent of 10 we would use for scientific notation, and the actual number that each one represents. All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to ask a question or leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next video.